What is up everybody, Jarrett from Empire of Assets here and today I have a really great video breaking down if you should grade your MetaZoo cards or not. Before we jump in the video, I wanted to do a quick first edition MetaZoo box opening. As you guys know, my goal is to get to 500 subs. We've had a little tracker bar in the background and I did update it. We are down to less than 80 to go. Uh, I made this one on Sunday when I had 420 subscribers. We're up to 428, so really this should say 73. The booster box health bar is well into the red. Every subscriber knocks that down one more. So if you're not subscribed, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, do one damage to this booster box, and we are so close to getting this bad boy open. Super excited for that. But without further ado, let's jump into today's video. So today we are going to be talking about if you should grade your MetaZoo cards or not. Uh, quick disclaimer before we get into it. Um, the first thing is this video is pretty math number heavy. I do have infographics on the screen for every clip. So definitely um, check out the screen if you are just listening. I think it will be well worth it to kind of see the visual breakdown of all of the numbers. And then the second thing is I know MetaZoo cards can get graded by I believe PSA, BGS, um, and then there's a couple other ones. I think one of the smaller companies does it. And then I have heard CGC does it. However, I looked on the CGC website and I couldn't find anything about MetaZoo cards. That's not saying they don't do it. Um, I just didn't want to email them and reach out and ask the questions. So leave a comment down below if you know if CGC grades MetaZoo or not. Uh, but first I just wanted to cover, well, with that being said, we are going to focus on just PSA for this video. Mainly, there is one SGC example in here. So first I wanted to just look at the general pop reports, um, some kind of background information on this. Obviously the Kickstarter cards launched in March. Uh, I believe PSA shut down in May. And then since then, the only way you've been able to submit cards to PSA were at the $300 level or the $200 level. Um, so that does definitely gonna skew our numbers. It's not like you can grade these cards for 20 bucks a piece like you used to be able to. Um, and you'll see how that kind of skews our numbers once we go through these. Uh, so first we're gonna cover the PSA pop reports of the three main groups of cards. First is the PSA graded sample cards. As you can see on your screen, there has been 89 total graded cards, total sample cards graded. 24 of them were PSA 10s, which is 27%. 48 of them were PSA 9s, which is 54%. And 17 of them were PSA 8s or lower, which is 19%. Obviously, you can see the PSA 10 rate is pretty low. I do think that is due just to these being sample cards. A, the quality probably wasn't there on the production. And B, MetaZoo hadn't really blown up when these cards came out and people probably beat them up, played with them a little more than what they did with the other cards. So then let's move into Kickstarter cards. There is 60 total graded Kickstarter cards. 37 were PSA 10s, which is 62%. That is a very high uh, 10 rate. And then 15 were PSA 9s, which is 25%. And only 13% or eight of the cards graded were PSA 8s or lower. Um, so as you can see, these are much higher than the sample cards. I think that's due to one, the people grading MetaZoo cards probably know the card world very well. They know how to look at a card and tell pretty closely what it's going to grade. So they're only gonna send off cards that they think will hit that perfect 10. And then also production got better and the Kickstarter cards became worth quite a bit uh, almost immediately after release. So people definitely sleeved them up and took good care of them. Then the last one is the first edition cards. Now there's only 31 total graded and I think that's totally due to the set only having been out for a little over a month, about five weeks. And there's not that many people are gonna grade a 20 to $50 card for 200 bucks. It's just not worth it but there's 31 of them graded so far. 23 have been PSA 10s, which is a huge number. 74%, which is even higher than the Kickstarter cards. Again, better print quality, people taking better care of the cards and people only sending in cards I think will hit 10. Fun little side fact here, eight red inks have been graded. This is the, boot, the box topper secret rare card. There's only supposed to be around 100 made. Eight of them have been graded so far and four were PSA 10s. The lowest one was actually a PSA 3. I would love to see what that card looks like. It's got to have some sort of uh, printing 
print lines or defects or something in it because otherwise a PSA 3 is an absolutely terrible grade. It must look like it was ran through the washing machine and the dryer uh, all at once. So now we're gonna move into some price breakdown and this is where the video really gets interesting. So I did um, looked up some eBay sales data for the raw card, then calculated the cost of grading, the cost of what a PSA graded card sold for, and then kind of the profits you can get. And I did that with four different cards just to kind of paint a general picture. Now this is really tough to do because as you saw, very few cards have been graded by PSA. If you go on eBay, type in MetaZoo PSA sold listings, there's not, there's one page of listings. There's not that much data, uh, but I think this does paint an interesting picture even with the little amount of data that we have. So first edition Chaos Crystal, the holographic, uh, a raw card sells for about $35 right now. If you graded that with PSA, it would be 200 bucks. And a PSA 10, which again has a 74% chance based on the other cards that have been graded, sold for $330. So on that sale, you would gross 330. Now I did not calculate shipping fees, eBay fees. Um, I just wanted to keep this pretty simple. So we just did the sale price, the uh, grading, plus the card price, and then the profit. So your gross was 330 on this card, your cost would be $235, and that would stand you to make $95, which is a 40% return on your investment. This is just the start, it gets way crazier than this. Let's move into the next one, which is the first edition Sam Sinclair. Now this is one of the obnoxious nine, it only comes in a holographic card. So a raw is demanding a little bit of a higher price at $60. So again, same cost of grading, 200 bucks. PSA 10, again, a 74% chance to hit that. Sold for $513. So if we break this down, 513 minus our 260 for the card and the grading is going to be $253 in profit or a 97% return, which is insane. Then this is our one SGC example, which I think it also is very valuable. So an SGC 10 of the same card sold for 195 and you're probably thinking, well, that's less than, that's almost a third of what the PSA 10 sold for. However, SGC grading costs right now is $20 a card at the lowest rate, whereas PSA is 10 times that at 200. The SGC turnaround time is also, I think, less than a month, so very reasonable, unlike some other um, companies. So if you do the $20 grading fee, you sell the card for 195, your total cost on the card is $80 and you stand to make $115, which is a pretty good return with a much lower um, upfront investment. You're only sticking $80 into the card instead of the 260 in the PSA example. So 97% on the Sam Sinclair, but wait, there's more. First edition Mothman. Now a lot of people think this is the best card in the set. Um, the best numbered card in the set, I'll say. Uh, Got to throw in that little red ink disclaimer. But a first edition Mothman raw copy is going to set you back about $250. Now the cost of grading, again, $200. PSA 10 still have a 74% chance based on all the cards that are graded so far. Sold for four digits. That is 1,000 big ones, $1,000 for a PSA 10 first edition Mothman. You're gonna gross a thousand bucks if you sell this card. Your cost in the card would only be $450. And that is a $550 profit or 122% return. And you have a 74% chance of hitting that PSA 10. But let's say you're risk adverse. You don't wanna risk all this money. PSA 9 has got your back. Cause the odds of you hitting not a PSA 10 or a PSA 9 seems very low. I would say in the 15% range maybe. I mean, maybe even less than that, maybe 10%. So let's say you don't hit that 10 though, you hit a nine. A PSA nine sold for $780. So your gross is going to be 780. Your cost is going to be 450, leaving you to profit $330 or 73% even on a PSA nine, which is obviously, I'll let the numbers speak for themselves, an incredible return. But last but not least, this is the cards that there is probably the hardest amount to find a lot of data on. Luckily, we had two sales recently, and that is this guy right here. 
the Kickstarter Chaos Crystal. This was the only Kickstarter PSA 10 that I had seen. That had sold, not saying it's the only one that has sold, it's the only one I could find easily accessible on eBay. A raw copy of the Kickstarter Chaos Crystal, also called the, uh, the Black Lotus of MetaZoo, is gonna set you back $1,200. Grading cost is going to be 200, which this is one of the only cards we look at where the grading cost is actually a fraction of the card cost. So totally, you're gonna have $1,400 in this. However, it is a Kickstarter card. Your PSA chance is lower at 62% than the first edition, but still pretty high, better than 50-50 odds. And two of these Kickstarter Chaos Crystals in PSA 10s sold for $3,750. If we crunch the math on that really quick, that is gonna give us a gross of $3,750, a cost of 1,400 for a total profit of $2,350 or 167% return. Now, obviously putting up $1,400 is a lot. There's probably not that many people out there that can do that and take a gamble on this card. But if you stand to make a 167% return and the odds of you hitting a 10 are 62%, I think this is a real opportunity, not with just this card, but with most Kickstarter cards that some people should probably be looking at. I think it is probably one of the largest um, supply and demand gaps in the MetaZoo market at this point. Now that people know about Kickstarter, they know about theme decks, they know about release event decks, they've kind of found all the little nooks and crannies. I think the last unexplored piece of the MetaZoo puzzle is grading. If you look at any other card sports cards, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Flesh and Blood, Magic the Gathering, they all grade the cards. It's how you get the most, it's how you squeeze that card for the most amount of profit possible. And MetaZoo has not had that happen at a large scale yet. I think it will happen. The market is gonna balance out, the market always does. But I think right now the market has these cards priced wrong. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope you learned something on this one. I hope you at least consider maybe picking up some MetaZoo cards to grade. It is, I think it's a huge opportunity. I do have a bunch of MetaZoo cards. I will now seriously consider sending in some of them. The $200 grading cost is, it's a lot, I'll be honest with you. I'd really like to see that at 100 or lower before I start sending in my cards. They're not going anywhere, I already own them. Um, so it's something that I will probably weigh over the next couple weeks and kind of look at when I think PSA prices are going to move down to that $150 or $100 tier. But that is all I have in today's video. If you enjoyed it, if you learned something, please hit the subscribe button. Let's get this box open. Uh, I'm so excited to get this bad boy open. It's good to set goals and it feels even better to accomplish them. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video.